Well, good day to you. Today we're going to continue in my calculus conundrums involving derivatives, and today we're going to talk about some more complex derivative rules. So we're going to start this video, we're going to do the product rule, and then we'll move on to the chain rule, I mean the quotient rule, I'm sorry, in the next video, and then we'll move on to the chain rule eventually. But let's start with the product rule. The product rule is a rule that you use when you want to find the derivative of a product of two functions. So basically it goes like this. Let f of x and g of x be two differentiable functions. Then the derivative with respect to x of the product of f of x times g of x is equal to f of x times the derivative. See the uh, little apostrophe there, so times the derivative of g of x, and then plus g of x times the derivative of f of x. So basically it's a sum of two products, where one product is the function times the derivative of the other function, and then the other product is just the reverse of that. It's it, You just reverse it, you give the g function, and then times the derivative of the f function. And it's hard to mess this one up because... Um, since addition is commutative, you could have this term first and this term second, and it would still be okay. Or you could re reorder this as g prime of x times f of x, or reorder this as f prime of x times g of x. And so it's kind of hard to mess this up if you know, as long as you know the general idea. Now I like the shorthand notion where I just assume u is f of x and v is g of x. And then I know the derivative of u times v is u times v prime. That just means that the derivative of v with respect to x. And then plus v times u prime, where u prime is the derivative of u with respect to x. So let's go ahead and look at a, an example. Now, you might be tempted on this problem to go ahead and multiply this out using uh, the distributive property and come up with one long polynomial. Uh, I'm not saying that won't work, but what I am saying is it won't teach you this product rule because there are functions later that you can't multiply together uh, like you could these two. So we're going to see this first function, 1 minus 3x squared. That's going to be, we're going to call that u. And then the second factor, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, we're going to call that v. So just following uh, this shorthand notion here, we know that we take the u, which is the 1 minus 3x squared, and then we multiply it by the derivative of v. Now, you could go ahead and calculate the derivative of v in your head here, but notice here, I'm just giving you the, um, I'm, I'm fixing to take the derivative concept. So, I take the derivative with respect to x of this function. And then plus the, the second part of it, I take the v function, which is the 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, and then again, I'm showing you that I'm fixing to take the derivative of the u function. So that's that's actually going to be u prime. Now, again, you could skip that first step and go straight to the second step here where you have, um, where I actually just give you the, the u function. And I go ahead and calculate the derivative of the second function. So the derivative of 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 is 4x minus 3. And then I bring down the v here, so I have plus the v function times the derivative of this u function. So the derivative of 1 minus 3x squared would just be minus 6x. Now this step here, you, you've, actually completed, you've actually completed the, um, the calculus involved, but it turns out that many times we need to simplify this function, and I'll let you... I uh, do the arithmetic or the algebra to do that. Basically just FOIL these two binomials when you multiply them and you'll get these four terms minus 12x cubed plus 9x squared plus 4x minus 3 and then here just distribute the negative 6x through each of these three terms and you'll get minus 12x cubed plus 18x squared minus 6x. And then if you collect your like terms from uh, this long expression, just collect like terms, you'll get minus 24x cubed plus 27x squared, minus 2x, minus 3. And so that, my friends, is the derivative of the original function. And one thing I do want to say, 
a little bit later in calculus, you're going to have to learn how to find the zeros of these derivatives. So if it's if it's written like this, uh, you can set it equal to zero and solve for the x values. Okay, here's another one. Now this time I'm using t for my independent variable, but as I told you before, it doesn't matter. You know what the independent variable is. You still the rules still apply. So here I want to find the derivative of the product of, I have two factors here. The first factor is 2t squared minus 3. The second factor is 4 minus t squared minus t the fourth. Now if you look here, you'll see I wrote the first function times the derivative of the second function with respect to t, and then plus the second function times the derivative of the first function with respect to t. Now you can do these derivatives here in your head. So we could just skip this. Um, we could just skip that step. I wouldn't recommend it until after you do some practice. But but you know that all you have to do is say, okay, the derivative of this would be the first function, which is two t squared minus three times the derivative of this function, and the derivative four is zero. The derivative of minus t squared would be minus 2t. The derivative of minus t the fourth would be minus 4t cubed. And so we just bring that down for the uh, derivative of the second function. And then we bring down the first function, which is just 4 minus t squared minus t the fourth. And then we multiply it by the derivative of 2t squared minus 3, which we know is 4t. Now, I didn't show you the algebra here, but again, if you multiply this together, just go to scratch paper, multiply this together, multiply these two together, and then collect like terms, and you'll get minus 12t to the fifth plus 4t cubed plus 22t. Now, I saved this function for last because um, if you're taking a, a business calculus course, you can likely skip this. Anytime you see trig functions, and if you don't have trig functions in your course, then you can skip this. But Calculus 1 students would need to know how to do this one. Okay, so I have uh, a product of two functions. x squared is the u function, and cosine of x is the v function. So I can apply the product rule where I take u, which is x squared, and then times the derivative of v, so that would be the derivative of cosine x. So again, I'm just going to show that here, that I'm going to take the derivative of cosine x. And then I take the second function, which is v, and then I multiply that by the derivative of the first function, which is x squared. And again, you can skip this step if you want to, because I know that all I'm going to do is take x squared, times the derivative of cosine x, which is going to be minus sine x, and then it's going to be plus cosine x times the derivative of the first function, x squared, which I know is 2x. And then all I did here was just clean it up a little bit. I wrote the first term as minus x squared times sine of x, and then I wrote the second term as 2x times cosine of x, and that is your derivative. So I thought I would end uh, this with just a little application here. Suppose we wanted to find the slope of the tangent line to this function here, uh, 1 minus 3x squared times 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 at x equal 1. Okay, well, first of all, we found the derivative up here already. So here was the derivative that we got, minus 24x cubed plus 27x squared minus 2x. So we don't have to worry about finding the derivative. So there's your derivative right there. And now all you have to do is plug the 1 in to find the slope of the tangent line to this graph at x equal 1. All you have to do is just plug the 1 into this function. Everywhere there's an x, we plug in a 1. So 1 cubed is 1 times negative 24 is negative 24. Then 1 squared is 1 times 27 gives me 27. And then 2 times 1 is 2. And so I have a minus 2. And then bring down the minus 3 and then combine all of these numbers and you'll get, uh, let's see, minus 24 plus 27 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, and then 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So the slope of the graph of this function right here at x equal 1 is negative 2. Okay, so that's that um, completes the uh, examples I wanted to show you on the product rule. And so the next set of applications are going to be on the uh,
quotient rule. And don't forget, if, you're, if you find these helpful, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. On, uh, and then you can go to the playlist for Calculus Conundrums, Finding the Derivatives.